Hi, and uh, welcome back to Farmstead MTG. So uh, me and my wife traveled to a new tournament, and uh, I brought my camera. So we have a lot of new videos coming up. Right, so there was a uh, Norwegian holiday called, uh, what's it called? Ascension, when uh, Jesus was uh, floating up to uh, the sky. And uh, there's a tradition here in Norway to have a tournament at that day. So, and the tournament is called uh, Jumping Jesus. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of uh, putting Jesus in the, the title. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> what kind of viewers I will get from that. But uh, yeah, let's see. So uh, this is a, yeah, it's a great tournament. And a lot of uh, familiar faces from the Norwegian old school community. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at some, some decks. And uh, here's the first deck. This, uh, the, the pilot is uh, Thomas Nilsson. So, uh, funny story. Uh, he asked a friend before the tournament what he should play, and uh, his friend told him you should play uh, mono white. So uh, that's what he is doing, but uh, he didn't want to play a boring uh, Black Knight Crusade uh, aggressive deck. So he made a perfect deck. So the perfect is uh, the it's the artifact cards, the holding mine, relic barrier, black wise, icy manipulator. Uh, all those cards have uh, cards have great synergy and makes a very good uh, prison deck. So if you combine that with white, you have the best removal. You can see he has uh, disenchant, sort of blowshare, and some uh, spicy one-offs. So it, this deck is uh, sweet. So, and uh, he played with uh, 61 cards in his main deck, and the last is the Titania Song. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny splash of green. So the Titania Song uh, makes all non-artifact creatures artifact, and their power and toughness is their casting cost. So, uh, that's a cool trick. So, uh, yep. It's going to be interesting to see how this uh, decks uh, deck do it. Okay, and uh, the next deck is uh, Nils. He's playing Counterburn. And uh, first of all, uh, what a beautiful uh, deck photo! Uh, of course, I do love Counterburn decks, so uh, <laughs> I'm easy. Uh, to be amazed, but uh, so this deck is pretty standard. But you can see he made some uh, tweaks in this uh, main deck. He uh, he plays main deck uh, city uh, old man of the sea, and he also has two falling star in his uh, main deck. So that's not common at all. But. Uh, it is pretty cool to, to do those uh, small changes. So f for me here, it looks like he has uh, pre-sideboarded for aggressive decks. And uh, often, if you just look at a look at a deck uh, on the internet, the deck uh, has some answer to combo and some to aggressive decks. But uh, if you sit down and start thinking and uh, think about what decks are coming so if you think there's a lot of aggressive decks you shouldn't be afraid to do like Nils here and uh, put some of your cyber cards in your main deck so uh, you can have a good uh, game one against an aggressive deck so uh, yeah at least that's what, I, that's what I'm thinking he's doing so, that was the deck deck. Let's get down to the match. Game number one. You have uh, Nils to the left and Thomas to the right. Thomas is on the play. Starts out with the planes. A bad land from uh, Nils into a soul ring. Sinkhole, disenchant uh, soul ring. 
directory. Ooh, and a workshop. That card is restricted in Swedish old school. So, uh, but what a card. You can get uh, three uh, colorless mana to cut artifacts. So now he can uh, play an Ice Manipulator and uh, tap down his opponent's uh, factory. Oh, and Nils doesn't have a, a second land. <laughs> the Hive. That's awesome to see. So that's a five mana artifact. You can and you can pay five mana and tap it to get a wasp token with a, it's a one one flyer. So cool card, but uh, it's not often seen. Uh, here comes a winter orb, and the icy taps down the factories. So now. Each player can only untap one land each turn. Of course, uh, Thomas uh, can use his Icy Manipulator to tap his Winter Orb and then get around uh, the effect. So that's a cool thing. In the meantime, Nils has a Black Lotus. Uh, Thomas is uh, tapping it down with the Ice Mini player. So, yeah, so this is how prison decks do. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, and here comes a uh, wasp. So, all balls outside of the screen, but uh, you can barely see it. And he puts a uh, dice to represent the number of uh, wasp creatures. Yeah, that's the wasp. So he attacks for one. I see to tap down the Black Lotus. Uh, <laughs> and Nils uh, can't do it that much. If he starts attacking with the uh, factories, he, uh, yeah, he doesn't get his mana back because he can only untap one land. But the end of turn, Lightning Bolt. Thomas makes another wasp token. <laughs> Lightning bolt number two. Thomas keeps tapping down the black lotus. Big uh, Dills only has uh, one Shatter main. And there is there is the Hercules Recall. I think he has one of those as well. But it's going to be pretty hard to do any damage with uh, your creatures. Down to 14. Uh, those bolts uh, start to add up, so Thomas is down to 11. Attacks for 2. Puts Nils down to 12. Another wasp token. Relic Barrier. Oh, and a 
make a big stone. I think that's what. End of turn, as is recall. in his hand. And uh, Thomas is going to do the relic barrier trick on the winter orb. So he's tapping down his winter orb so then he can add tap all his lands. recall at, at the end of Thomas Nilsson's turn. Wow. And since he play ca cast it end of turn, Thomas has to uh, discard down to seven and he can't cast any more cards this turn. Wow, that was the card he needed. <laughs> and he has three factories, so he can really go on the offensive here. So Thomas is discarding down to seven. I think that was the only card that could give him victory in this game one. So uh, so of course he can pay tap three mana and attacks with attack with three factories, but uh, that would leave him vulnerable to uh, winter orb. So uh, let's see how he navigates this. I, I expect he has some burn cards in his hand. And he doesn't have to do 11 damage uh, this turn. He attacks with uh, one factory. And then Thomas cast a disenchant. Like he's going, he's thinking about uh, countering it. Yep, there's the counter spell. So that puts uh, Thomas down to nine. Two mana left. Oh, and a time walk. That's a huge. So he can attack for six, but. Thomas is at 9. Let's see how he does this. That's an attack only for 2. So uh, down to 7. Lightning point, point bolt, that's 4. And a Sevenic Blast, that's lethal. Game number 2. Thomas is on the play. He has an awesome start with a workshop into a soul ring into a icy. Wow. Good start. Iron, Mox Sapphire, Time Walk. Yeah. Not too bad. Another Iron. Holy Mine. So I talked a little bit about the uh, Winter Orb last game, but Holy Mine has has the same uh, the same deal so you can see how he taps his holding mine down with his ice minute player and then when the holding mine is tapped it doesn't work so now Nils is only drawing one card and uh, Thomas can draw two cards and, uh, as Sarandi Effort has uh, entered the table 
Oh. <laughs> and a mix though. So it's not fun to cast out Serendia Threats when your opponent has Icy Manipulators, but you gotta start to put out creatures and uh, try to do some damage. Of course the Meek Stone is pretty horrible for the Serendia Threat, but uh, that the Meek Stone wasn't on table when he cast it. Ivory Tower, those came from the sideboard. He has a, yeah, I think he had four Ivory Towers in his sideboard. And, uh, you can see there's he's getting some more life, more dices down there. Contos the winter orb. Sweep mine on the Labre of Alexandria. <laughs> oh wow. Not easy to be a coat of burn player in this game, especially when your opponent has uh, life gain, because your deck is good to do, uh, your deck can easily do 20 damage, but uh, <laughs> it can't do 40 or 50 damage. Uh, time is also an, a thing, so uh, I, I uh, speed up these uh, matches, so uh, I think you should consider to concede, but uh, for courses, I don't know exactly how much time there is left, but uh, yeah. Twist also, of course, that hurdles recall, he can uh, draw again. And uh, I think he has some more shatters now from his sideboard. Speaking about shatter, let's take care of that icy. He's down to 14. Puts down us down to whatever. <laughs> Come to spell on the IC. Uh, Thomas attacks with his factory. Classic uh, prison deck. Yeah, and Nils uh, scoops. Thank God. <laughs> and game three. I think they are starting to run short on time. So I think it was smart to Nils uh, to scooping that second game. Turn one. Winter orb. As 
second it went up. So the moxes are great against winter orb because you can untap those. So, uh, tapping some mana. Yeah, old man of the sea. Oh, boo. <laughs> so to blow share. Old man of the sea was uh, a card I had from way back. So, uh, I always love those, but uh, it's so hard because of that Arabian Night uh, symbol versus the sit in a bottle. And in the meantime, the Hive has entered the battlefield. Let's see if we can make some uh, Wasp tokens. And I'll sink coal. Sink coal on a factory. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was just thinking uh, we really need a Sarah Angel there, but. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Nils had a uh, counter spells. So Asara could uh, have finished the game pretty quick. Lightning bolt on the factory. You can see they are playing uh, pretty fast. spell on the relic barrier. Sapphire. That was at the end of turn. And now he's using it again. Looks like he's going to cast something uh, cool. Ooh, Titania song. It's great. And uh, the Titania songs makes all Moxes uh, zero zero creatures, so they die immediately. Uh, his artifacts is now 2-2 uh, two, two creatures, power and toughness equal to the casting cost. So uh, Nils has a fellow stone that is also a 2-2 two, two creature and he has a, a factory that can uh, block and become a 3-3 three, three creature so Thomas uh, can't attack. comes a 1-1 one, one ivory tower.
looks like he has some uh, something in his hand that is considering casting tap into iron Ooh, a brain geyser for four and it, and, uh, it takes two damage from city of grass so it's down to 13. Stone is blocking the ivory tower, and the factory is blocking uh, the relic barrier, and it pumps in itself. So it, so Thomas loses two cards and do four damage. Niels is down to nine. <laughs> oh, a balance. So Nils had a lot of cards in his hand after that Brain Geyser, so they are now gone. Both players have zero cards in hand. The Holding Mine is, the, is a 2-2 creature. is at 16, it's it at 9. Uh, yeah, so he attacks uh, with both two creatures, takes two damage from uh, the factory, down to 13. And now we are in, in uh, top deck mode. The clock is ticking and city in a bottle. And uh, I think they're forgetting about uh, their lands because uh, Nils has two city of brass and uh, Thomas has uh, Alabria of Alexandria. Uh, he's attacking with his factory, he can pump it. So he takes out the uh, city in a bottle. Yeah. I th I think they they forgot about the lands because they're playing pretty fast here and there's a very few minutes left. Of course, that's unfortunate, unfortunate, but uh, yeah. So demonic tutor. Wonder what it is tutoring for let's see if it costs an ancestor recall oh shivan dragon that's a card that can finish uh, a long game Named after uh, Shiva, the god of destruction. Let's see what he can do here. So he attacks and uh, pumps it for one. So that's uh, six damage. Puts Thomas down to eight. So now, next time he attacks, he can uh, swing for lethal. Thomas attacks with his uh, two creatures and uh, disenchant the blocking uh, factory. So that's three damage. It's down to four. Yeah, and he dies to the Shivan attack. Right, we made it through. GG. So uh, Nils uh, won, 2 to 1, and, uh, yeah that was a long one, but uh, that's how it goes with uh, prison decks. Uh, unfortunately about the uh, city in a the bottle there, because 
I don't think this could have had uh, didn't have a uh, black mana for that demonic tutor to get the shivan dragon but uh, yeah whatever when you're playing fast to try to finish uh, a match uh, it's easy to do uh, small mistakes but uh, yeah so that's it for me today I'll see you in the next one bye bye